Clyde Shelton was an engineer, one time, he spent his evening with his beloved wife and daughter in their house, Clyde was busy with his work, meanwhile his daughter was busy making a handmade bracelet for her mother and father, unfortunately, their peaceful and warm evening was suddenly ruined by two robbers who came and barged into their house. Those robbers tied Clyde up and taped his mouth, a robber called Goggin said that Clyde couldn't fight his fate, he also stabbed Clyde's stomach with a knife, as if it was not enough, Goggin also brutally raped Clyde's wife and killed her afterward, after that, he also ruthlessly killed Clyde's daughter. When Goggin was about to kill Clyde's daughter, his colleague named August warned him not to do such horrible thing, but Goggin refused to listen to him and decided to kill that poor girl. Nick Rice was a rising prosecutor, he was going to take care of Clyde Shelton's case. Nick was one of the highly competent prosecutors in that city, he had a very good reputation, unfortunately, he couldn't do much to help Clyde Shelton in his case because of the flawed legal system. One day, Clyde visited Nick in his office, he was surprised when Nick told him that Goggin was only going to receive a five-year sentence in the prison, Goggin also denied that he had raped and killed Clyde's wife and daughter, he accused his colleague August of doing those horrible things instead, because of that, August was the one who was going to receive the death penalty. Clyde tried to submit the DNA test results and explain all of his defenses, but the prosecutor rejected them right away, he said that he was unable to accept them as the evidence, besides, he had also made an agreement with Goggin and his lawyer, he did this because he wanted Goggin and August to at least receive punishment even though the punishment was not like how Clyde expected. In the courtroom, Goggin's cunning lawyer named Bill managed to help Goggin by reducing his prison sentence into only five years. Meanwhile August was going to receive death penalty after he served a 10-year sentence in the prison, Goggin was so proud of his lawyer when he found out about the judicial decision. After the trial was ended, Goggin approached Nick and told him that he couldn't fight his terrible fate. Goggin thought that he was exempt from the law, he even asked Nick to shake his hands outside of the courthouse, there were many journalists that had been waiting for them, they were asking them with many questions about the trial. Clyde saw that from afar, he was furious with everything that had happened to him, he saw Nick and Goggin shaking hands, he was mad at Nick because he thought that Nick had worked together with Goggin. After Nick left the courthouse, he felt very guilty because he didn't stop the judge from only giving a five-year prison sentence to Goggin, but he realized that he couldn't do much because of the flawed legal system, he could only share his feelings and thoughts with his wife and unborn baby. Ten years had finally passed, the day where August was going to be executed finally came, right before August was executed, he said his final words, in his final words, August admitted that he made a mistake in that evening, but he swore that he had never killed or raped anyone, he said that Goggin was the one who raped and killed Clyde's wife. After that, he was executed horribly. He had to endure excruciating pain until he finally died. He had to receive a horrible punishment that he was not supposed to receive. Nick and the police thought that something was wrong with August's execution, they began to question the incident in Clyde's house, then, a policeman found a liquid bag, he suspected that the liquid inside of that liquid bag had been replaced with poison, that liquid bag was used to kill August in his execution, surprisingly, there was a writing on that liquid bag that said can't fight fate, that writing reminded Nick of Goggin because he remembered that Goggin often said it, at the same time, Goggin was spending his leisure time by consuming a drug in his house, there was a woman with him in that place, he saw the news about the execution of his former colleague August on TV, not long after that, his mobile phone rang, he received a call from an anonymous person, that anonymous person told Goggin that the policemen were going to come to his place and arrest him for his use of drugs. Goggin panicked and left that place immediately, he asked the mysterious person who was talking to him on the phone about who he actually was, that mysterious person said that his intention was only to help and save Goggin, he also told Goggin to come to an abandoned warehouse, he said that he had defeated a police officer there, he suggested Goggin to use that police officer's gun to protect himself. As soon as Goggin arrived in the abandoned warehouse, he got inside of a police car that was parked outside of it, he took the police officer's gun and threatened the police officer with it, Goggin told that police officer to leave that place immediately. When they arrived in a safer place, Goggin told that police officer to get out of the car, he planned to kill that police officer, that police officer begged Goggin not to kill him, he said that he had a family who really needed him, while Goggin was pointing his gun at that police officer, he received another call from the mysterious person who had called him before, and suddenly this thing happened. Apparently, that mysterious person was Clyde. Clyde was disguising himself as a police officer to trick Goggin. Goggin was surprised when he found out about that. He fired a shot by using a gun that he got from Clyde. But instead of releasing a bullet, Goggin got injured because the gun released some anesthetic needles which wounded his hand. Clyde planted those needles in that gun on purpose, he said that those needles contained tetrodotoxin which would paralyze Goggin's body for a while, but Goggin's nerves were going to function normally, because of that, Goggin was going to be able to feel pain even though his body was paralyzed, 
Clyde told Goggin that he was going to make Goggin feel the greatest pain that he had never felt or imagined before. In that warehouse, Clyde who was once a loving and kind-hearted person had turned into a cruel monster. He had even studied some medical instruments only to take revenge on Goggin. He wanted Goggin to feel the greatest pain that he could never endure until he finally begged for his mercy. Clyde gave Goggin a saline solution and an adrenaline to keep him awake during the torture that he was going to perform on Goggin's sin. After that, Clyde began to wear a welding helmet and severely injure Goggin's leg. He was recording that torture with his camera. Nobody had idea about Clyde's plan, but the police managed to find out about what Clyde was doing to Goggin. Clyde didn't panic when the police officers came to his house and arrested him. He didn't try to run away or fight those police officers as if he planned to get caught and arrested by the police. When Clyde was being taken into custody, Nick visited him in the prison to interrogate him about his cruel behavior toward Goggin and the unusual death of August. Clyde gave Nick a confusing statement. He also tried to change the topic of their conversation by asking Nick for a new bed in his cell. He promised to tell Nick everything after his bed was replaced with a new one. At first, Nick refused Clyde's silly request. But after he realized that this case was really important to him, he finally agreed to give Clyde a new bed. Not long after that, Nick received a call from his wife. His wife told him that their daughter was in shock after she watched a tape that displayed a video of Goggin who was being brutally tortured and killed. Nobody knew who was the person who sent that tape to Nick's house. They couldn't suspect Clyde because Clyde was in the prison, but they believed that it was part of Clyde's game. Apparently, Clyde had been researching and studying law for these past 10 years. Because of that, he managed to defend himself well in the courtroom. He didn't even hire a lawyer to speak for him. He was doing what Goggin was doing 10 years ago, which was challenging all court officers in that court to prove that he was guilty. He knew that the court officers didn't have clear and convincing evidence to prove that he was guilty. After the judge heard Clyde's good argument, she was about to decide that Clyde was going to be released from the prison, but Clyde rejected that decision right away. He wanted a serious punishment instead. He finally admitted that he had committed his crime in that courtroom. He also made a scene and said that the court officers couldn't do their jobs. The judge was angry because Clyde was humiliating her and the rest of the court officers there. So, she finally decided to declare that Clyde was guilty of August and Goggin's murders. When Nick visited Clyde in his cell, Clyde finally admitted that he was the person who had killed Goggin and August. Then, he asked Nick for another silly request. He asked Nick for some delicious food and an iPhone. Clyde threatened to kill the man called Bill who became Goggin's lawyer 10 years ago if Nick refused his request. Nick realized that Clyde was serious and something horrible might happen to Bill, so he agreed to accept Clyde's request. In spite of that, Nick didn't take Clyde's request seriously. He was purposely late by 8 minutes when he delivered the food that Clyde had asked. Because of that, Clyde told Nick that he couldn't guarantee Bill's safety. When Nick and other police officers arrived in a place that Clyde told them to go, they saw Bill lying dead inside of a box that was buried underground. Bill's body was tied inside of that box. It seemed like Clyde had prepared his murder perfectly. Not far from Bill's body, Nick found some oxygen tanks that had been set to last no more by 3 past 15. It meant that they could have saved Bill if they delivered Clyde's food on time. At the same time, in the prison, Clyde brutally killed his own cellmate while he was having his lunch. After that incident, they moved Clyde to a single cell because they thought that he was dangerous for other prisoners. Nick visited Clyde in his single cell. He thought that Clyde had gone too far. He was disgusted by Clyde who killed his cellmate just because he wanted to be moved to a single cell. He condemned Clyde for his action. Nick realized that he was taking care of a quite unusual case. He and his old colleague named Jonas began to look for more information about Clyde Shelton. They went to meet with a man in that evening, apparently, that man was Clyde's former colleague when Clyde was still working as a secret agent. That man told Nick and Jonas that Clyde was not an ordinary man. He said that Clyde was a killing machine who was highly effective at committing murder. He also mentioned about one of Clyde's greatest achievements in which he managed to kill their target by only using a tie that was made of carbon fiber. Their target died instantly after that tie strangled his neck. That man explained that this became one of Clyde's greatest achievements because that target was hard to kill. They tried to kill that target with various kinds of weapons but they always failed. Then, that man said that there must be a reason why Clyde killed his own cellmate. He also warned Nick to be careful because he could die anytime if Clyde wanted to kill him. After he gained more information about Clyde from Clyde's former colleague, he asked the police to assign some police officers to guard his house. He was worrying about his family's safety. After that, Nick and the judge Laura discussed about the punishment that they were going to give to Clyde. Laura was the judge who was in charge of Clyde's trial 10 years ago, but while they were having a discussion, suddenly this thing happened. Hello? Nick realized that Clyde was a dangerous person who was capable of committing horrible murder. 
he visited Clyde in his cell and interrogated him about the crime that he had committed against the Judge Laura, he also told Clyde that the revenge that he had been taking all this time wouldn't bring justice to his late wife and daughter, but Clyde defended himself by saying that he did this because he wanted to fix the broken justice and legal system, then, he asked Nick for another request, his request this time was much different from his first two requests. He asked Nick to get rid of all of his accusations and release him from the prison before 6 o'clock in the morning. Clyde threatened to kill everyone who was close to Nick if Nick refused his request. Nick was angry when he heard that. He refused Clyde's request immediately. He ordered the entire staff in the prison to stay there until at least 6 o'clock in the morning. That prosecutor wanted to ensure the safety of the staff because Clyde had threatened to kill everyone who was close to him. He also asked Sarah and his other colleagues to move to the prison because he worried about them. It was finally 6 o'clock in the morning. Nobody there died like how Clyde threatened Nick before. But suddenly, this horrible thing happened. All of Nick's colleagues including Sarah died instantly, all cars that were parked in that place exploded except Nick's car, unlike other cars in that place, Nick's car wasn't planted with a bomb or any kind of explosive. After Nick saw that incident, he asked the police to watch over his wife and daughter, he asked them to take his family away from that city for a while. The next morning, before Nick attended the funeral of his colleagues, he visited Clyde in the prison first, he beat up Clyde immediately because he was furious with what Clyde had done to his colleagues. Clyde didn't regret any single thing he did even though Nick beat him up relentlessly, he was determined to punish those corrupt law enforcement officers until the government changed the legal system for the better. When Nick and the others were about to leave the cemetery, the cars that they used suddenly broke down, apparently, their cars were damaged by a robot that was controlled from a distance, and suddenly, this thing happened. Jonas died instantly in that incident, Nick was greatly saddened by the death of his best friend, the mayor was also saddened by Jonas's death because Jonas was also her best friend, Nick tried to resign from his job but the mayor appointed him to become a district attorney instead, the mayor told Nick to take care of Clyde's case as quickly as possible, Nick was looking for more information about Clyde Shelton, he managed to find all transactions that Clyde had made for these past 10 years, from those records of transactions, Nick found out that Clyde had purchased a property, that property was located near the prison, after that, Nick went to check that place with his colleague, when they arrived there, they found many instruments in that place, they believed that those instruments had been used by Clyde to commit his crimes, there were also some military supplies in that place. Nick found a secret tunnel that turned out to be connected to every cell in the prison, he realized that Clyde had been entering and going out of the prison like a freeman by using that secret tunnel all this time, Nick also found Clyde's note that revealed his plan to blow up the city hall. After they read that note, Nick and his colleague went to the city hall right away, they warned the officers who worked in the city hall to evacuate everybody from the building, apparently, Clyde had arrived at the city hall, he came there to plant a bomb in the building, not long after that, Nick and his colleague also arrived at the city hall, they asked the police tactical unit to prepare themselves, they brought a good bomb disposal technician with them in order to anticipate the explosion in that place. Apparently, the bomb that Clyde had planted was a bomb that had great explosive power, that bomb would explode if the phone that attached to it received a call, they only had 30 seconds to prevent the bomb from exploding after the bomb was activated by the phone call. Nick told his colleague not to tell the mayor about it because he knew that Clyde was watching them from afar. Clyde finally returned to his secret room, he was surprised when he saw Nick in that room, Nick tried to make Clyde realize about how harmful his action was, he also suggested Clyde to live normally like he used to, he said that Clyde didn't have to achieve his silly ambition, but Clyde refused to listen to Nick, he made a call from his phone instead, that phone call was going to activate the bomb at the city hall, Nick who saw that left that place immediately, apparently, he had moved the bomb at the city hall to under Clyde's bed in the prison, after he got out of Clyde's secret room, he locked the door right away. Clyde panicked when he heard his phone rang near him, not long after that, a great explosion happened, Clyde couldn't do anything except accepting his death, while he was waiting for his death, he was looking at the handmade bracelet that his late daughter made for him, Nick realized that Clyde committed all of those heinous crimes to change the broken legal system for the better, after that incident, he was determined to fix the legal system as best as he could. <laughs>